Hey guys, it's Taran and welcome to the On Track channel and to the 2022 race ratings for the Belgium Grand Prix. So a very warm welcome to the Belgium race ratings, this series taking a more chilled out look at the driver performances. As always, spoilers ahead if you've not seen or heard about the results from the past weekend. Also, do make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it and subscribe down below for more F1 content every week. Now with those two things out of the way, let's get into it. Starting with the result and it is Max Verstappen who takes the win after starting 14th on the grid. What a drive from him. In behind, Sergio Perez completes the 1-2 for Red Bull, a great outing for them. Then in third place, the lead Ferrari, Carlos Sainz, they definitely did not look to have the pace against the Red Bulls today. In behind him in fourth, George Russell, the only Mercedes finishing the race, will get onto Lewis Hamilton just a little bit later on. Behind them, it's Alonso ahead of Leclerc, who got a five second penalty for speeding in the pit lane, having stopped for the fastest lap, an absolute face palm from Ferrari. And then finally, rounding out the top 10 is Ocon, Vettel, Gasly and Alexander Albon picking up a point for Williams. Then on to the race itself, and it really was a great opening few laps. You know, you'd look down towards turn one, you had Perez losing some places, some drama there, that both the Mercedes getting past him and Alonso. Then after that, down towards Lecom, Hamilton and Alonso coming together again. I'll get into that a little bit more in Hamilton's section later on. Afterwards, lap two, Latifi just spinning for fun, collecting Bottas, those going out, the safety car coming out, then Leclerc having to stop because of a tear off and... I believe it was actually Verstappen's visor tear off that meant he had to pit, kind of ruined the whole sort of Leclerc and Verstappen both battling their way through, but what can you kind of do about that? Afterwards though, it did kind of die down a fair bit, it wasn't quite as exciting as maybe those first few laps made it out to be. There were a good number of overtakes throughout the field, like in the midfield and towards the back, but I think the trouble was a lot of them were A, not caught live by the race director, and B, kind of a lot of sort of DRS passes, Kemmel straight, ahead by the braking zone, not really too much fighting, so they weren't overly dramatic or overly exciting overtakes. There were a few in there, you know, Ocon had double overtakes, I think twice, once into the bus stop chicane and once into turn five. That was quite cool to see. Elsewhere, you had Albon just holding up basically everyone, that Williams absolutely rapid in a straight line. You know, nobody could get past him. Then you had George Russell also towards the end, kind of catching science. Would he get there? Would he not? Just not quite able to, made a little mistake in there. And then Ferrari at the end, a classic just, what's going on here? Boxing Leclerc to try and take the fastest lap, came up then behind Alonso, had to re-overtake Alonso, did so, didn't get the fastest lap, but then because of that pit stop, ended up speeding in the pit lane, which cost him five second penalty, and he ended up in sixth, so the net result of all of Ferrari's trying to gain one extra point was losing two. On to the ratings then, and for the race itself, I'll start with you guys and your vote from the YouTube poll. And for this one, you've given it a 6.2, which I feel is kind of fair. It definitely wasn't the best of races. A little bit underwhelming as we had four weeks off and Spa does usually deliver. Not the best this time round. For me, though, I've kind of gone along a similar route, but a little bit lower. I think it's going to be a 5.5 for me. Obviously, those first few laps were really great and it did look like it could turn out to be an amazing race. I even saw a tweet from someone saying, oh my gosh, this could beat Silverstone. However, the rest of it just didn't quite add up and it sort of lacked a little bit of excitement. Plus the whole sort of Verstappen and Leclerc having to work their way through turned out to not really be much of a case as it was super easy for Max and Leclerc kind of got stuck a little bit and just slowly made his way past people. Onto the teams then and the first one is Haas, not the best performance from them, just really looked to be lacking any sort of pace around the track, just weren't very competitive. For drivers, I'll start with Magnussen, who actually started fairly high up on the grid. I think it was 11th, and unfortunately for him, like I said, the Haas just didn't really have the pace. You know, he gained a place or two on the opening lap, but from there, just slowly, slowly moved his way backwards. The strategy itself wasn't bad, going mediums, hard, mediums. Quite a few cars did that, or in a different order, maybe like medium, medium, hard. However, throughout the pit stops and on track, that Haas car was just losing pace, so I don't really think that there was too much that K-Mag could have done. So ratings wise for him, there's not too much to say. I think it's probably going to have to be a five. Ultimately, his rating is much more down to just the pace of the Haas car this weekend. Maybe it would have been nice to see him pick off a couple of cars by the end of the race, finish a couple of places higher, but unfortunately not the case. 
Then next up Schumacher and unlike his teammate started from really far back I think he was actually the last car on the grid I think starting from 18th with both Alfa Tauris in the pits. For him very similar to Magnussen in the case that the Haas car just didn't really have any pace this weekend. However I would say compared to his teammate you know he's obviously moved upwards from the back whereas his teammates moved backwards and actually when I was looking at the timings and they were both on their mediums at the end he definitely reeled him in the gap went from sort of like eight and a half seconds down to just one and a half two. So in that case, I think for Mick, I'm going to give him a 6. Could have been a 6.5, but ultimately, he still finished down in 17th place. It's not like an incredible drive or anything. Next up, we have Alfa Romeo. And in all honesty, with both cars taking engine penalties, I believe it was always going to be a tough one for them. For the drivers, I'll start with Valtteri. And obviously, had a collision with Latifi on lap 2. Just got tagged by the Williams as it spun across the track which sent him into the gravel, a little bit of avoiding it, but also the contact, and from there was stuck, not really much he could do. So ratings wise, it's obviously going to be a not applicable. Absolutely no fault on him for that one. Also, fun little fact from this weekend, which I found amusing, was that somehow Valtteri qualified in P20 and thanks to engine penalties, started in 12th. So just a neat little more you know. Next up, Joe, who started actually lower down than his teammate in 14th, and fairly quiet from him, didn't really see too much, in terms of looking back at the timings, overall the pace was fairly solid, kept up with the likes of Norris around him, sometimes the Alpha Tauris, sometimes the Haas, and also found himself a lot of the time stuck in the Albon train, especially towards the end of the race, where unfortunately unless you have amazing straight line speeds, you're really not going to get past anyone. So for Joe, I think it's a pretty sort of average race, nothing too special, I think it's going to be a 5.5. Definitely a case of didn't do anything wrong, but also didn't do anything too special either. Next up McLaren and I think it's got to go down as a pretty disappointing weekend for them. Neither car scoring any points and that's not what they need in their battle with Alpine. Then on to drivers and first off I'll start with Lando. So he started further back thanks to engine penalties down in P16 and like a lot of the cars ahead of him had the trouble of trying to work his way through kind of similarly paced cars and even if he was slightly quicker once you get stuck in a DRS train or stuck behind someone that's quick in a straight line it was always going to be tricky to make progress. However he did slowly make his way up the field and compared to his teammate Ricardo clearly had more pace and a better race like if you compare their finishing positions compared to their starts Norris is up four and you'll see that Ricardo is down eight. So ratings wise for Lando I think it's probably going to have to be a six. Generally, fairly good, fairly solid. There's nothing wrong with a 6. It's a pretty good rating. However, nothing too spectacular. Maybe I could have given him a 6.5, but on the whole, I think it's a fairly sort of average but good performance. Next up then, Ricardo, and sort of opposite to Lando, where Norris moved forwards, Ricardo moved backwards. He started up in 7th place, which then became 6th after the Hamilton Alonso incident on the first lap. Admittedly, two of the cars behind him were Verstappen and Leclerc, so they were probably going to get through. However, he did kind of move backwards and I think getting stuck behind Albon who overtook him was really the undoing for his race. We saw lap after lap, it was Ricardo behind Albon and he just couldn't get past, which meant that the cars behind such as Norris and Joe etc all caught up to him and then he really missed out with the strategy at the end. That's not quite his fault, McLaren sort of let the other cars undercut him, but on the whole it was still quite disappointing from Ricardo. So I think ratings wise, it's probably going to be a four. He wasn't like horrific, but still to start from seventh, actually be in sixth place and then end up still a few spots behind your teammate and unable to overtake the Williams. Admittedly, it was quick, but still not the best performance for him. Next up Williams and they've actually come away with a point thanks to Alex Albon in this one. And I think getting points for Williams, that's always got to be seen as a positive race. For the drivers, I'll start with Latifi, who started the race actually in 10th place. However, very quickly found himself moving backwards, thanks to his instant on lap 2, where he ran a little wide at Lecon, got a wheel into the gravel, then spun across the track, also tagged Bottas in the process, found himself then running completely last of anyone in the race. Now, for me, that instant is completely on him. He's not really pushed wide or anything, just runs wide himself and then comes across the track and collects Bottas as well, which forces him out the race. So that's not great. From there was running net last basically the entire race and was almost 10 seconds off of the Hasses who finished in front of him by the end of it. So ratings wise for Latifi, I think it's probably going to have to be a three for this one. Has an instant all on his own and takes out another competitor. That's always going to be bad. 
Plus, you consider that his teammate was finishing in a points position, not too great from the Canadian. Then on to Alex Albon, who has executed what I can only imagine was Williams' plan and done it absolutely perfectly. He started all the way up in P6 and was overtaken by Ricardo, then the likes of Verstappen as well, but managed to get past Ricardo, and from there, no one was getting past him. That Williams was so quick in a straight line, and he knows that as long as he keeps a little bit of distance between him and the car behind, he's going to be holding that position. And that is basically what he did the entire race. I'm pretty sure every time it cut to Albon, there are a number of cars behind him. And as long as you're keeping them behind from Albon's perspective, he's doing his job perfectly. So for a rating for Albon, I think it's going to be an 8.5. It was a really good drive in the sense that he did exactly what he needed to do in order to get Williams a point. And yeah, he got Williams a point. So anytime that happens, you know it's going to be a good rating. It's not quite a 9.5 or a 10 or anything like that, just because, well... If the car is super quick in a straight line, that's not so much on the driver, but still, to be able to come away with a point is a great drive. Plus, considering he lost four positions total and two of those go to Leclerc and Verstappen, it's deserving of a high rating. Next up, Alpha Tauri, who pick up a couple of points thanks to Pierre Gasly, and on the whole, I think considering they both started from the pit lane, they've got to be quite pleased with that. So for drivers, I'll start with Sonoda, who, as I mentioned, started from the pit lane and just sort of very slowly made his way up the field. Gained a few places in the opening few laps. He also started on the hard tyres, was the only one to do so, which meant he could run a little bit longer. And generally, the pace was fairly decent. Did sort of find himself caught in train behind Magnussen for some points. But when the Haas was out of the way, he was continuously sort of catching the cars ahead of him. And then eventually after all the pit stops and after a couple of moves to make some progress, found himself in 14th behind Joe, who he overtook on the final lap to get up to 13th. So ratings wise for Sonoda, it's going to be a 7.5. To go from the pit lane into P13 is a really, really good performance. Not quite as good as it maybe could have possibly been. You'll look at Gasly in a second and you'll see why. So then on to Gasly, who started from the pit lane like Sonoda, but managed to finish all the way up in P9 and get a couple of points which is 11 positions overall in an Alpha Tower, which hasn't been the quickest car. However, to go from the pit lane to P9 is a great, great drive. Started on the medium tyres and was actually behind Sonoda for a fair bit. However, when he switched then onto hard tyres and subsequently mediums, that's where he really made progress, moving so far up that he was well clear of the likes of the McLarens, the Hasses, Joe, Sonoda even, so much so that he was actually fighting the likes of Vettel and Ocon for those final few points. So ratings wise for Gasly, I think it's going to be a 9. It's a really, really impressive drive. You know, if Sonoda had a good drive, what does that make Gasly's? Next up, we have Aston Martin, who are definitely showing that trend of getting quicker and slowly moving their way into a solid midfield team. So for drivers, I'll start with Seb Vettel, who I actually think had a pretty good race. You know, he started up in the top 10 and the key for him was getting past someone like Albon early on. He was actually running up in like P5, I think at one point, this was before Verstappen came through and Hamilton was out. And that really set him up for the rest of the race. You know, he was with Alonso for a bit. And then when they had the pit stops, made sure to stay well clear of the whole Albon train. As unlike his teammate who got stuck in that, being away from it meant that Vettel could just push on, use as much pace as possible. And that's come through at the end where he's picked up a good few points. There's really not a ton more to say with Vettel. So I think for a rating, it's going to be an 8. Overall, it was all set up by those first few laps, making sure he got past Albon and from there showed some really good pace. Didn't have any unnecessary battles, had that kind of cool three wide moment with I think it was Gasly and Ocon, ultimately Ocon getting past, but Gasly not. And so he ends up in eighth. Pretty good result. Then next up, we have Lance Stroll, who actually started one position higher than Vettel in eighth, whereas Vettel was in ninth. Now, the difference was Stroll ended up behind the likes of Albon and so spent his entire race kind of in that sort of Albon, Ricardo, Stroll, Joe, Norris, Magnussen for a point, that whole kind of gaggle of cars, which meant he couldn't quite show the whole pace that I think was in that car. Did get squeezed wide at the start by Vettel into the gravel and you can see on the replay that just allows Albon to get past. So I don't necessarily think it was his fault that he ended up in that situation. But still, that is kind of where he ended up, and when you compare to Vettel, who was up in P8, it's not quite as good. I think ratings-wise for Stroll, it's going to be a 6. It's in that category of, he's not done anything wrong, but he's not had anything too spectacular either. It's still a fairly decent drive, and ultimately, through no real fault of his own, that's why he's ended up in the position he has. 
Next up we have Mercedes and obviously there was a lot of optimism surrounding the team coming into Belgium and to only have one car finish and that car finish in fourth, I think it's probably going to be a disappointment for them this weekend. For drivers, I'm going to start with Hamilton and before even we get to the collision, first off had a really great start, did jump Perez and stayed ahead of Russell. That was really good. But then came the point where he was pushing for P2, trying to go around the outside of Alonso and I'm not going to lie, it did almost seem a bit inevitable with those two. With the incident, I think you have to say it definitely is Hamilton's fault, he said so in the interview afterwards, and I think he's just turned in a bit too much, doesn't quite see Alonso there, ultimately doesn't leave enough room and he suffered the consequences. So when it comes to a rating for Lewis, it's kind of between either a not applicable because it's a lap one incident, or something quite low for him. And I think ultimately I'm going to go with the three for Lewis for this one, as while yes it's a lap one incident, he just didn't need to be as aggressive as he was there, he could have stuck around the outside given a bit more room and still probably taken the place anyway. The reason it's not any lower, say a one or a two, is it's not the most horrendous of incidents, you know he's not just gone steaming in and completely punted someone off and ultimately he's the main casualty of that, you know Alonso still carried on and finished in fifth, it wasn't horrendous for him. Then next up Russell, who I think had a fairly good but also very quiet race. At the start, got past Perez, slotted in behind Hamilton, and then was overtaken by Perez pretty much straight away into Lecom on the Kemmel straight, regardless of the Hamilton Alonso incident ahead, Perez is getting through. From there, just settled into a pretty quiet race, basically running in fourth the entire time. It did look like he could potentially catch Sainz towards the end, but unfortunately made a little mistake and that just cost him too much time and ultimately finished a couple of seconds behind the Ferrari. So maybe you could say he could have squeaked out a podium, but ultimately the pace of the car kind of restricted him to fourth place. So I think for a rating, it's probably going to be a seven. It's not the most incredible of drives. I think the pace of that car is always going to put you just behind the Red Bulls and the Ferraris anyway at the moment. However, the fact that he was chasing down Sainz and ultimately if he hadn't made a mistake, would have had a chance to get him. I think it would have been nice to have seen that to give him a higher rating. Next up Alpine and a double high scoring points finish means that they extend their lead in fourth place in the Constructors. For drivers, I'll start with Alonso, who's actually had a really good race. So back to lap one, he had a really good start, got past Perez into second place. Then he's had the collision with Hamilton, which absolutely is not Alonso's fault. He's completely squeezed onto the curb. There's nowhere he can go. Did sustain some damage and also Perez and Russell got by. But from there, with a slightly damaged car, drove really, really well and actually just found himself generally in a sort of quiet space ahead of the people behind him, but definitely not keeping up with the likes of Russell ahead. And then come the end of the race, where Ferrari just, well, were Ferrari, ended up in this little battle with Leclerc. I actually think on the last lap he deliberately went wide to try and let Leclerc through, but Leclerc didn't go for it. Ultimately was overtaken by Leclerc, which is understandable, but then has been elevated into P5 thanks to Leclerc's penalty. So for Alonso, having what could have been a race ending collision on lap 1, to still finish fairly comfortably in 5th place is a really good drive. So I think for a rating for him, it's going to be an 8.5. On the whole, really good pace shown, and with a slightly damaged car, it's a great result. Then next up we have Ocon, who started further back thanks to grid penalties and engine penalties etc. However, made up a couple places on the first lap going from 15th to 13th, and from there was just steadily making progress the whole way. Also some very opportunistic moves, I think he had a little double overtake on I believe it was Ricardo and Latifi, or Ricardo and Albon, one of the Williams cars, and then he also had the double overtake with Gasly and Vettel on the Campbell Strait, what a great move that was. So for Ocon, he's done really well, started further back, just slowly making progress, making very opportunistic moves. So for a rating, I think it's going to be an 8, it's a really solid drive, if I compare to Alonso, I guess I'd just give Alonso the edge, hence he got the 8.5, but still for Ocon, it's a really good performance. Next up we have Ferrari, and where they really needed some good points this weekend, it's just overall really not panned out. I'll start with Carlos, who's maintained the lead into turn 1, obviously those soft tyres kind of helping him at the start. From there onwards, after the safety car, you know, Perez was kind of comfortably behind, but as they moved on to the mediums and then the hard tyres, the Ferrari just didn't seem dialed in as well as the Red Bulls, especially, you know, when you compare Sainz to Perez, I think Verstappen was never really in question, but comparing the two drivers, Sainz and Perez, he just didn't really have the edge as the tyres got harder. And then towards the end of the race, once he was on the hards, was actually being caught by George Russell, so the Mercedes had more pace than the Ferrari on those tyres. Overall for science, I think you've got to say it's maybe slightly disappointing, like yes P3 is a podium, but when you start on pole position, 
you beat Perez in turn one and Verstappen is down in 14th and you still finish comfortably in third place behind both of them, it's not amazing. It must be said the Red Bull definitely looked overall the faster car, however it still would have been good if he could have picked off Perez. I think for a rating it's probably going to be a 7, it wasn't like a bad drive or anything, I think he still drove well considering the overall pace of the car, just again nothing overly special. Then we get onto Leclerc and what looked like it was going to be a really great Verstappen and Leclerc both making their way through the field didn't really happen as with the safety car he had a tear off which I actually think was from Verstappen's car from the footage that I've looked at and um, got stuck in his brake ducts which meant that he had to pit during that first safety car on lap 2 or 3. That put him to the back of the pack and he had to work his way all the way back from there. Did get up to P5 which ultimately was probably as far as he was going to go after that safety car stop. However, then the strange incident at the end where Ferrari decided to go for the fastest lap, boxed him and he came up behind Alonso, which then meant he had to re-overtake him, didn't get the fastest lap and then the mistake for speeding in the pit lane and giving himself a 5 second penalty. In terms of clearing cars along the way, I think did generally well, did appear to be stuck a little bit at points but on the whole was fairly comfortably getting past people even when they are in DRS trains. So ratings wise for Leclerc, I think I'm going to give him a 7, the same as Sainz. The tear off issue obviously doesn't help and you would expect his car to make his way through the pack, you know that Ferrari is still very quick. However, it has made the mistake at the end which drops it from maybe somewhere like a 7.5 or an 8, just that little half mark or so. And then finally Red Bull who have had the perfect race, a 1-2, Verstappen coming from 14th, they'll be really pleased with that. So driver wise I'm going to start with Perez, obviously he started in P2 and had a horrific start, was sort of pointing almost towards the pit wall, then got all squirmy, lost some places, was behind Alonso and both Mercedes cars, did get Russell back towards the end of the straight like that move would have been done regardless of what happened ahead, then got those two places off of Hamilton and Alonso with their collision, so it was up into P2. Got past Sainz eventually when they swapped onto the medium tyres and was driving well, however when you compare to Verstappen who started 14th and ended up winning by over 20 seconds, it's not like an amazing drive from Perez. I do think Verstappen was in another world this weekend and ultimately Perez was never really going to be competing for the win once Verstappen got through, but still would have been nice to see him maybe a little bit closer. So I think for a rating for Checo, it's going to be a 7.5, just that half mark ahead of the Ferraris, you know, did finish ahead and I think made good use of the tyres he was on, never pushed them too hard and ultimately second place is still a very good result, it's a 1-2 for the team. And then we get on to Verstappen, the race winner coming from P14 grid slot, 13th with Gasly taking a pit lane start. However, to come from there and win in the way that he has by basically 20 seconds, well clear of everyone is an incredible performance you know he was up to p1 by lap 12. i know science pitted but still when you consider that someone starts 13th or 14th and has gained basically a position a lap all the way it's an incredibly good drive obviously then from there pushed on and it never really looked in doubt and then the fact that everyone kind of almost thought he could win and would win from there just shows the kind of level that Verstappen is on right now. In terms of mistakes or issues, I really can't think of any. Maybe you could say he didn't quite get past Perez at the very first opportunity, but still, I think when you look at a perfect drive, you've got to say that's it. And so rating-wise for Verstappen, it's going to be a 10. That's his second one of the season, the first one came at Imola, and it's the only two I've given out this year. So that rounds out the race ratings for this one. As you can see, Verstappen sitting at the top there with 10, what an amazing performance from him on the whole. At the other end of the scale though, Hamilton not having the best race alongside Latifi and that's how you really know it's not been great. In terms of the updated standings, Verstappen still well clear at the top, well ahead of everyone else behind him. Hamilton also drops just a little bit, Alonso making some nice progress as well, those Alpine guys have really been doing well recently. At the other end, Latifi still at the bottom as you would probably expect. Also for this episode I changed up the way I sort of script and record it so please let me know if it did sound maybe a little different, better, worse etc. Some feedback would really be appreciated. But anyway that is all for now. As mentioned before do make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and subscribe for more F1 content along with leaving your thoughts, feedback, ratings and suggestions down in the comments below. But until next time, take care.